located on the edge of the Tongur Desert, Babusha was once an inescapable sandstorm corridor. Over the course of more than 40 years, the six people who founded the Babusha Forest Farm and the two subsequent generations of people who have worked there have managed to turn a harsh, inhospitable locale into an oasis of vitality, contributing a Chinese solution to the ongoing global challenge of desertification. <laughs> Chen became the first person from the Babusha Forest Farm area to graduate from college and introduced a desertification prevention and control model involving China's Internet Plus informatization strategy shortly after. Scented sachet and embroidery production is a time-honored aspect of the culture of Qingyang City. A master craftsperson, Liu Lanfang, has been infusing modern aesthetics into the traditional craft and helping women living in the city's rural areas get involved, which has enabled them to improve their incomes. Located in the upper reaches of the Yellow River in western China, Gansu Province is like a piece of precious jade embedded at point where the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, the Lowest Plateau, and the Inner Mongolia Plateau converge. It became necessary to consider how to awaken Gansu's natural resources, improve infrastructure weaknesses in areas like transportation and internet coverage, and leverage the province's geographical advantages and abundant history in order to accelerate high-quality development in the area. Looking back on an extraordinary decade in Gansu, the problem of absolute poverty has come to a historic conclusion in Gansu and it has realized its dream of becoming a prosperous region. Traditional industries have been transformed and upgraded, and emerging industries have been vigorously developed. The green Qilian Mountains and magnificent Yellow River have been protected, and the province has fulfilled its responsibility as an important West Chinese ecological barrier. Gansu has actively participated in the Belt and Road Initiative and promoted high-level opening up. The vivid development practices that have been implemented in Gansu have enabled its residents to improve their lives and participate in the transformation that has been occurring in China in the new era. An Internet Plus project known as Digital Danhuang has enabled sculptures, frescoes and other cultural treasures that have gone through thousands of years of vicissitudes to experience a new birth in the digital world. <laughs> From humble street food to an international representative of Chinese food culture, Lanzhou beef noodles have satiated diners and created jobs for tens of thousands of people as a modern dining industry worth tens of billions of dollars has taken shape. In addition to making knowledge and information more accessible in Longnan City, the internet has made it possible for agricultural and sideline products produced in the depths of its mountains to reach countless households and gain a foothold in the mobile broadband era. One of the birthplaces of traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, Gansu has been establishing TCM centers and training institutions overseas and participating in the development of cultural exchange platforms dedicated to TCM. The export of TCM products has been booming and people around the world have been benefiting from ancient Chinese wisdom. Smallholders in Linjia Hui Autonomous Prefecture and Dingxi City have received support with zinc-enriched potato cultivation as part of efforts to sustainably improve livelihoods and address the zinc deficiency 
that existed in these areas in an innovative manner. Ganan Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture has been developing its yak milk industry in recent years. Its abundance of a rich, fermented, dried milk residue known as chula has enabled it to engage in large-scale casein production with the aid of a unique technical process which has helped people who live in its pastoral areas increase their incomes and become more prosperous. Tian Chui City has been establishing educational parks in its mountainous regions, which has made it possible for it to implement a flexible mobile teaching model that enables students who live in remote rural areas to access high-quality education near their homes. Water shortages were once the most significant bottleneck restricting agricultural development in Gansu. Enterprises dedicated to water conservation have gradually emerged in the province. However, the revolutionary technology that they utilize has made it possible to make the best use of every drop of water and accelerated innovative water conservancy efforts focused on the province's farmland. Better education, higher incomes, more reliable social security, and a greener and more beautiful natural environment have resulted in the creation of a new starting point that has enabled Gansu's 24.9 million residents to pursue greater happiness and prosperity in an appealing and vitalized province. <laughs>